The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the July 2nd, the terrific Tuesday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that, it's to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two-by-four shift, well, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this, during this next 53 minutes, I am here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on it at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question but you can't call in, I've got your back. You can always send me an email. Send that off to Steve at TFNN.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. And, of course, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on a terrific Tuesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Well, we're going to start our day with the mixed bag out there. That is the soup du jour of the month. Well, that was the soup du jour for the month of May. Looks like we're going to be there in the month of June. You've got the Dow trading down 23 points. The s and up four. NASDAQ 100 up 71. Russell's up two. Semis are up 11. Trend is off 26. Gold's back a buck 70 with silver being up 32 pennies. That's a 1% move for silver today. Light drink crude is off 17 cents. Natural gas is back in nickel. The 30-year treasury up a half a point, printing out at 116.19. Our leader in the clubhouse to the upside is Super Microcomputer. Nearly a 5% move for 37 bucks. Tesla's up 18, 8% there. Bank of Montreal up 15 bucks, 3%. KLA Corp is up $9 in change, and Netflix is up 6 bucks in change. To the downside, it is Eli Lilly off 15 bucks. One and seven tenths percent. HubSpot down twelve or thirteen bucks, two percent. CrowdStrike seven and a half dollars, off about two percent. Pasira Biosciences, twenty four percent move to the downside, nearly seven dollars there. And MicroStrategy off about six. That's about a four tenth of move to the downside. So we got movers and we've got shakers. Of course, Stevie wants to take a look at what you want to look at. Let's begin the day like we have recently here. Just we'll stay on this black background screen for just a bit. We'll take a look at. Um, the New York Stock Exchange, it's advanced decline oscillator. Where are we at? We're still below the zero threshold level. That says that it is sellers that are the ones that are in control of the market. If you're wondering why we've got a chop, chop, fizz, fizz, oh, what a relief. Maybe it is not. It's because we've got that indicator that tells us that sellers have control. And we have this indicator, which is the uh, uh, perigee, I'm sorry, which is, I'm sorry, the VIX uh, out here which is trading below its 50-day exponents moving average. When you trade below the 50-day exponents moving average, that puts the, that is a, that's, it gives buyers the edge out there. So there's our clash. I wouldn't expect this clash to end. Uh, certainly tomorrow trading, we're open till 1 o'clock, or the markets are open, I should say, till 1 o'clock, obviously off on Thursday, and then back for a very light round of trading on Friday. So even Friday's trading, you know, they and the markets can be pushed. So the signals that would come out on Friday, not that anything is meaningless, but somewhat meaningless out there. So I don't expect that to change today. Where's the consolidation areas out here? We take a look at the equity future contracts. That's pretty easy to see. We'll go switch over to those white background charts. We'll take a look at the um, equity future contracts, and you'll see the ES Mini. And even though it's got two different tops out there, which it doesn't really matter, those two tops being a TD. Well, it's got really three tops out there. I've got wave number seven. I've got a TD9 count and a Rhodes Mintum indicator signal. Seems like that should be enough to bust through support, but no, 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 no. 
Support is down at 54.93. If we do get a close below that, then we're likely to head towards that 53.24 level. If we take a look at the NQ, the NQ has only two different tops, the TD9 count and the Rhodesman Indicator. But again, here, until price closes below 19.802, uh, which was a low yesterday, uh, we just have a sideways consolidation. As far as resistance goes, inside of the ES Mini, you're up at the 55.69 level. That would be one level of resistance. There are others. And in the case of the NQ, there's only one level of resistance. That's up at the 23.71 mark. If we take a look at the Dow Equity Future contract, that is consolidating with inside its profile. It has remained above that green oscillator and change line. This is going to be session number six out there. Now, even though price has been above that, we could take a look at yesterday. We could take a look at the day before. And what did price do? Ran right into resistance. If you're going to ask me where the sellers are at, well, that's a no-brainer. They're sitting right around that 39,739 level. In other words, if price were to close above that inside the Dow, then that would trigger a move up to 44,33. To the downside, support is at 39,090. And then we've got our Russell 2000. The Russell 2000 actually has a bottom pattern. It is a buy the D point pattern. It has created several of them. There was one that was created with this bullish hammer candle there was and then that ended up failing out here on the trading day of june 14th and june 15th the next or june 17th i should say provided the next buy the d point pattern out there and that price is uh, was struggling at the oscillator and change line now that's sort of acting as support i say sort of because we were above it for two days uh, yesterday we closed slightly below it today we're just slightly above it but what we do know, and that's the most important thing with regard to the Russell 2000, is that price has got to close above 2090 to tell us that um, this really wants to move higher. In other words, you've got a bottom pattern, but bottom patterns just say you've got to take out resistance in order to get any kind of upside traction. And in the case of the Russell 2000, that's easy peasy. That number is 2090. Now, if you do close below that uh, bullish piercing candle from June 17th, then we're headed lower out there. I, I don't have any mark on my uh, chart out here to tell us where we would be headed to. Uh, let me open it up. Let me just see if there's anything on this daily time frame that uh, sticks out at us. I would have to say, you know, it could actually, if you close below, here's the level. If you close below the six, uh, June 17th low, that number out there would be 2015. That would set up a new A to B equals CD pattern. In my opinion, that would look something like this. We'll draw that pattern in here. There's your A to B point. We'll just simply move this over to the C point, which was the high from a couple of days ago out there. That looks to me like that's at least a 0.382 retracement. And that would take us all the way back to that swing low from back in uh, April. That was a TD9 count bottom, April 19th to be exact. I am not making that as a call. I'm just giving you the upside potential, the resistance levels, and, of course, the downside area. So that's what's going on inside the daily equity future contracts out there. And I don't expect this to change today, tomorrow, or anytime soon. Let's go take a look at the intraday charts. Let's go see what they are communicating to you and I. These are the intraday charts for the NQ. What do we see out here? What do we see out here? You know, uh, we're going to we'll have to start getting down to the brass tacks here. And those brass tacks are really the intraday chart. So on a 50, and I mean the short-term intraday charts, we take a look at the 15-minute uh, time frame chart. It's TD9 count top was negated as we're coming on the air at 11 o'clock. I don't see any kind of a top out here on the 10-minute chart. So this is suggesting that we may head higher. But where's resistance up top out here? Where is resistance? I just have to say it's at 2145, and that is the top of the bearish structured four hour time frame chart for the NQ. We come back to this break. Let's go take a look at Apple, Amazon, ITM, NVIDIA, Microsoft, and SPXL. And I guess Mara as well. We'll be right back. And If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer. 
the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Weight Trading Methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, and uh, thank you, all you dinners out there that have uh, put in some requests out there. Just makes this show for Stevie at least go a lot easier. So we're going to start with Apple. Uh, these are uh, this one is from a uh, G Man, and so so G Man, what has transpired out here? We're take a look at the weekly chart. Let me just simply expand out that chart. So we've actually pushed just to, so the, first you'll see an A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. It's been confirmed. And what I mean by that is been when that B point was passed, it was passed with volume. It wasn't passed with a little bit of volume. It was passed with mega volume. What do you mean mega volume? Well, there was 310 million shares on that uh, trading week of July 21st. And when that was passed, it was 635 million shares. Yeah, I consider that to be mega volume uh, for Apple out there. But what we have seen here, I don't know if this was today or yesterday, is what's taken place so far this week, it's today, is price poked its head up uh, uh, just enough uh, this is the bar following bar number nine to go ahead and complete a TD nine count top on Friday out there. Now, what that says, so that's the that's what the weekly chart is showing us. The monthly chart is saying I'm bullish, 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 bullish. So bull, you know, to that, that call you just made there, Stevie, with your TD nine count top pattern. Maybe that's the case. I don't know. If we look at the uh, daily time frame. The daily time frame, you know, it's trading into a swing point from back on June 12. 198 million shares there. We're nowhere near that today. We're up at 24 million shares. It doesn't matter. If price closes above that swing point, that swing point being 220.20, uh, we've got up to a high today of 221, uh, 220.34. Uh, that's what took us uh, to that uh, TD9 count on the weekly time frame out there. So if price closes below that, what you would have on the daily time frame, you would have a uh, failure to take out a swing point on light volume. Does that mean we're going to pull back? Well, first, I would say it could mean, but does it mean it? Guaranteed mean it? Absolutely not. Now, how can you say absolutely not, Steve-O? Well, because unless price gets behind, gets below, closes below that green oscillator and change line, 216.65, we'd really have two competing patterns. One in the summer months before July, uh, third out there, testing and rejecting a swing point 
Okay, so that'd be a failure, but that does not mean that we're going to automatically head lower. If you close below that green oscillator and change line, that would absolutely increase the odds out there. There's no profile level of support until you get down to 200.57 for us to really be taking a look at. So, G-Man, the monthly chart is bullish. The daily chart is basically bullish out there uh, in that it's trading about profile and oscillator and change line resistance, but it is trading in that swing point. So what's the call here? I think we got to come back and take a look at this on Friday out there. Um, but that's what I see when I take a look at the charts. Uh, so I hope that that helps you out. And as always, thanks for your request. You had a second request and a third request. So if we take a look at the second request, that was for the amazing one, Amazon. As we take a look at it for a daily time frame, the interesting thing about the Amazon chart uh, was that it formed a new profile yesterday below price. G-Man, that is a bullish signal out there. So no matter what, that's a bullish signal. Now, that doesn't mean on a pullback, price can't test that level, but it's just simply all out bullish. Now, I can see on the daily time frame, maybe there was a sell to D point pattern. Let's go check out. The, let me just make sure I pulled it back far enough. Yeah. So let's go take a look at the A to B equals CD pattern out here. Now, when Amazon bottom, it was with the TD9 count bottom. Now, let's just simply, I'm just going to move this over. I'm not going to do the cut, paste, and assemble, the whole CPA thing. We're just simply going to move it over here. And so you do have on Amazon, you do have a daily sell to D point pattern. What's this telling us? This is telling us that maybe price is going to pull back to the 191.15, maybe 192.96 area out there. So that's a possibility. But what the heck? If we take a look at yesterday, we didn't get down to yesterday's low. It was just an inside bar out there. Uh, today, we're not anywhere near yesterday's low, but we haven't taken out yesterday's high. If we do close above yesterday's high, that number being 198.30, we likely go target. And we're trading inside the swing point that had volume of 74 million shares from June 27th. Yesterday, you closed inside it with 41 million. But again, we're in holiday weekend and summer, so I don't think we got to put a ton of um, a ton of um, of uh, weight into the volume aspect. It's just simply summertime out here now. We take a look at uh, and and the holiday week, and we take a look at the monthly time frame chart. There is no top that I see inside of Amazon, and it's just simply in an all-out bullish breakout mode. You've got uh, price trade above that green oscillator and change line, as well as profile resistance out there. So weekly is absolutely bullish. Monthly is absolutely bullish. We've taken out prior swing points out here. The swing point I'm referring to, let me get my cursor, was from the month of um, July 2021. There was 83 million shares that traded then. We closed above that, which was last week. It was with 53 million shares. So we took out a swing point with lighter volume. Does that matter? Uh, my my interpretation, absolutely not. We closed above a swing point. We've taken out resistance. We should continue to head higher. So the monthly wants to move higher. The weekly wants to move higher. The daily, I'd have to say, going into this weekend here, you're just simply going to trade sideways out there before we get any kind of real signal. But that's what I see when I take a look at the Amazon charts, G-Man. And finally, let's go take a look at ITM. Let's go see what it is signaling to you and I out here. And ITM, I'm not familiar with it, but we're going to get familiar right now. That is the um, Intermediate Muni ETF out there. So when we take a look at this, this formed a TD9 count top. We can see that pattern. That pattern went ahead and confirmed on June the 13th. And that remains in place. When I say that remains in place, you would have to close above that high, 46.14, for this thing to start getting bullish out there. If we take a look at what's transpired from that TD9 count top, well, price pulled back and tested and rejected its bullish structured profile. That was between the range of 45.63 and 45.68. It did that yesterday. Well, you can't bust them to the downside. Not that that's a bottom, but it can be a bottom getting back to a level of support. And that most certainly was a level of support. Now what price is doing is trade above yesterday's high. I would think that what G-Man ITM wants to do here is trade up towards the oscillator and change line. That's at about 45.85. On a weekly time frame, we just have a consolidation, it looks like, for the past four weeks out here. What price traded with inside its profile, that range is between 45.67 at support and 46.16 as resistance. And on a monthly time frame, you do have a nice Roachman indicator bottom. It gave us a signal that it was breaking out. We had three consecutive uh, closes above the top of that profile at 46.55, but finally it's pulled back inside there. And so you got a consolidation, which really ranges between about 45.30 and 46.55 uh, here. Uh, on a 30-minute basis, so I'll just give you a short term. This is popping up on one of my screens out here. What I see is a Rhodesman to indicator bottom. 
And that bottom here is suggesting, because we're above profile, this is suggesting to you and I that price should rally up towards 45.88. So we got 45.88 on the 30-minute time frame, 45.85 for the daily time frame. Stevie says that's where price is headed to. So, G-Man, thank you for getting us started off with those requests. Much appreciated. S&P Dave inside the Tiger's Den would like to take a look at NVIDIA. So we take a look at NVIDIA. What do we know? I will tell you the most important thing that we know, and that is the weekly time frame. Well, first on the daily time frame, this forms with one of Basil Chapman's wave number seven out there. Again, a very small portion of his toolbox out there. And yes, price is trading below the bottom of its profile, which is not a good thing. The bottom of its daily profile, that is, and that's at the 125.35. But I want to really point you to the weekly time frame. Because not until, and we have on the weekly time frame, by the way, we have a TD9 count top. However, what that TD9 count top has done is taken price back to support. Now, the week is not over. So it all depends on Friday. Where does NVIDIA close? But right now, it's neutral. It's not bearish. In fact, it's more bullish than it is bearish out there. We'll explain that when we come back from this break. Great. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the US futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels. You'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns. You'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry Pesavento on Friday, June 14th and Friday, June 28th this month for his live trading sessions, where you'll sit right beside him as he trades the market live. For this month only, enter code LarryJune24 and save $50 off your first month. For all the information and to reserve your spot today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk. So why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Trader's Edge is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully.
Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Welcome back, folks. So we're taking like an end video out here, and I had mentioned before we went to that break, this is more bullish to neutral than it is bearish. We take a look at on this weekly time frame. There was a TD9 count top that completed the week of February 23rd out there. What we can see here is that price pulled back on that day, or that week, I should say, tested, rejected that green oscillator and change line. Price must close below that weekly oscillator and change line in order to suggest that we're going to see lower price in NVIDIA out there. Now, that lower price would take us down to the uh, 114.50 level. If we take a look at these weekly time frames out here, we haven't seen price close below a weekly time frame, quite frankly, for some time out here. And th In fact, as far as I go back, it would be all the way back to October of 2022. October of 2022. How about that? So what does that tell you? That says if you're lucky enough and you're looking for a buy inside of NVIDIA, the place to place that trade is either at that 119.30 level, which we saw yesterday, or the more ideal spot, if we were to get it, and I can't say that we're going to get it, would be 114.50. Now, price closed below 114.50. Then we have a profile change in trend on a weekly basis when we haven't seen a close below a profile since 2022 in NVIDIA out there. So that's the place to take your next position if price were to get down there. And maybe it will. Why? Because in the month of uh, July, we're going to go ahead and complete a monthly TD9 count top. And uh, uh, so that would be the only reason why I would say that NVIDIA uh, could or should pull back towards that 114.50 level out there. So I hope that that helps you out, uh, Dave. And I believe we have a caller. So give me a second here. We do. We've got Paul in Texas. Paul, thank you for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? We have Paul. Paul, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Uh, perfect, Hello? perfect. Novavax, I believe, is what you are uh, looking at. Tell me what you're doing and how I can best help you. Well, I'm looking for an entrance point to buy and hold, and uh, for you know, for obviously, or to go up performance-wise, where it will go to. Yeah, and the reason that you're looking at this for a long-term perspective is. Um, to see uh, where it'll go. Hopefully, uh, I'm thinking, does it look like it pulled back quite a bit? I'm looking for it to, uh, to perform itself, you know, outperform. Got it. Okay. So, um, you know, we take a look at uh, Novavax. This thing rallied nicely back here in June 27th, got up towards that $24 level on a weekly basis, what I'm taking a look at out here. And right now, it is trading below the center of what I refer to as a bearish structured profile. Now, the first level of downside support in a weekly time frame, you mentioned you want to look at this more from a longer term, and that's why I'm not focused on the daily right now. Uh, we'll just focus on, we'll come back to the daily, but I want to take a look at the weekly and the monthly uh, with you. So what I would say is the first potential buy area, and you can't quote me to the penny because this number is going to change, um, as price moves up and down. But right now, it's pointing at about 11.57. So that would be a price target. Uh, your better price target would be if it gets back to 7.89, which is the bottom of that bearish structured weekly profile. And if price were to close below that 11.50-ish area out there, that's what the message would be to you. And so you've got some, you, I would say you need to be patient here. But at a minimum, what we should see, not that I've got a top necessarily on that weekly time frame chart, but because we're back inside that bearish structure profile, that's really the piece of information. That's really our clue as to what this market is, or the weekly chart is communicating to us. Do you have any questions about the weekly chart before I move on to anything else? Um, yeah, when you say weekly chart, are you talking short term, weekly, or are you talking about just as we go um, by the week over, over uh, the by period the of years? By the week. So each candle on this chart is, is for one week. Monday, Monday through Friday or whatever holidays, but for a specific week. So I consider take a look at a weekly time frame, four or five daily bars, if you will, to be kind of an intermediate terms uh, piece of information for us. I would consider the monthly chart because that's going to be all 30 days of the month or 28 days, how many we've got out there. That's going to be your longer term, which is the next chart that I'd like to open up for you. So as we take a look at this, what we can see is Novavax got all the way up to the high of about 340. It was 331.68 out. 
out there. And boom, it's been on just simply a steady decline to the downside. This did, so I have a bottom signal out here. And that bottom signal came in February of 2024. That bottom signal was seven moves to the downside, seven waves to the downside, I should say. And that's really a, a courtesy of a Basil Chapman a toolbox out there. And so now what this has done is this has rallied a bit. It's trading above its profile. The first key level of resistance inside of Novavax on a monthly time frame. So when you say you're looking for some, some significant upside potential, what I would tell you is that 2237 is going to be a real significant resistance level. I'm guessing you're looking at something like this going further back to back to its highs or something. Or I mean, give me a feel for where you think that price target might be. Well, I'm looking for it to go above uh, that, what is it like that around that eighteen, nineteen dollars again. So I think you mentioned the twenty-three something. You said 20, that, yeah. that's very possible. Yeah, so 22.37. So with that being the case, let me see if I can get rid of some of this data. So with that being the case out there, this would tell us your ideal entry area to Novavax on a monthly basis is going to be at 8.95. 8.95 would be the top of its monthly profile. That would be your first potential level of support. When I come back here to that weekly time frame, I've given you 7.89 to the 1150-ish type area out there. And what would be that trigger as price gets down to those levels would then be the daily time frame. And on a daily time frame, price is trading below all types of support out there. And this is suggesting that it wants to pull back further. And that's why I suggest to you when we first started and took a look at the weekly chart that we should see move back towards that 1150-ish area at first out there. So I don't see an entry point now. And as price pulls back to those levels, if you'd be kind enough, Paul, to give me a call back, we'll take a look at the charts and see what kind of signals we have there for all three time frames. How's that sound? Sounds good. Thank you. You bet. And have a happy July 4th, and thanks so much for your call. That was Paul in Texas, and what we were taking a look at there was Novavax. Let's squeeze in one more request here before we get to this uh, break. This is to take a look at Microsoft. This is for S&P inside the uh, Tiger's Den. S&P Dave, that is. We've got a couple S&Ps inside the Tiger's Den. Right now in a daily time frame, Dave, this is simply bullish out here. Bullish because yesterday's Rogement to Indicator top was negated. We are trading above profile. We're trading above the green oscillator and change line. Microsoft wants to head north. If we take a look at that weekly time frame chart, if price is able to close above last week's high, we're trading above right now, 456.17, it negates that Rogement Dim Indicator top and says north, Stevie. However, what this is going to do is form bar number eight of a TD9 count. You still have to form bar number nine, and that suggests you could see a top between this week and the next two. And on the monthly chart, says we should top out or get at least a nine count bar when we get to the end of the month. But it's so early, I don't want to make that call just yet out there. But Microsoft, at least on a daily basis, Dave, says it wants to head north. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. 
a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets. With updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers, whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. So we're going to take a look at SPXL. That is a 300% ETF for the bullish position inside the S&P 500. But first, what we're going to start with is take a look at the seasonal chart for the S&P 500 for the last 96 years. If you look at the bottom out here, the bottom right, that is, and you take a look at the month of July where my cursor is at, you will see that the month of July over a 96-year period has produced the largest moves higher out there. We are in a very bullish month. When you take a look at where that red line is at, that is today for the S&P 500, you can see that this suggests to move higher with a top forming sometime around the uh, September time frame out there. Now, that's just simply the normal 96-year chart. We are in a presidential election year. If nobody has figured that out by yet, we are. Let's go take a look at what typically transpires here. And that is, now you've got to see, you can see exactly where we're at. And this shows, even during the presidential cycle, that uh, July is bullish. But not only July bullish, folks, August is the largest, uh, is the most bullish month uh, uh, during the presidential seasonal cycle. This also suggests that we would top around September. So that's what we have with regard to seasonal patterns. It does not guarantee that the market will follow that, but that is really what we are dealing with here. What we've got going on right now on a daily time frame, Dave, is simply nothing more than a consolidation with inside the profiles. And what I'm using for that is the ES Mini, the S&P 500 out there. So um, I don't see I don't see this getting away from us, certainly before the end of tomorrow at one o'clock in the afternoon. I don't know what might happen on Friday because volume will be so light. This thing can be pushed. Just know that your resistance level is at fifty five sixty nine. Your real resistance, though, is going to be the high from uh, June 28th out there. And that high is at the uh, 5585 level. If price close above that, then what we just look at is likely to come to fruition, which is a further rally out there. Now, you want to take a look at SPXL. The parameters here would suggest that price has to close above the June 28th high in order to really get on your bullish case. That's 151. Uh, if you've got uh, support out here, we'll be at 140.55. But this is a triple, and you really need to do it. You need to trade this, SPXL, on the SPY. And then Stevie would say, well, you really need to trade the SPY based on the chart patterns inside the equity future contract out there. So you've got support here at 140.58, but use the SPY really as your uh, tool to identify where price is likely headed to. So I hope that helps you out, Dave, and thanks so much for the request. And uh, of course, happy July 4th to you as well. We'll be around tomorrow. We'll do tomorrow's show. 
Um, let's go take a look at Net. This is for the Shadow inside the Tiger's Den. Net is going to go ahead and complete a TD9 count top today, Shadow. What should unfold is price should pull back to the top of its profile, which is really where the green oscillator and change line right now is trading. And that's at about 79.18. It's just below that. Now, what you'd be looking for here, so I want you to prepare for a pullback if you're in this. If this pulls back, Test and reject that green oscillator and change line because just changed colors yesterday. That would be your next entry point. That would be a buy point for this. Weekly time frame looks uh, good. You're trading above profile. You're trading above its oscillator and change line. It would suggest the weekly chart that wants to go target the top of the monthly profile. And that's at 99.02. So that's what I see, Shadow, when I take a look at Net. Let's go take a look at Nike out here. This is for Duncan Steve. We take a look at Nike. Holy sh Nikes out here. What do we have? You know, you'd really like to see some kind of new daily profile form. We're trading well below any kind of support out here, although I believe there is an A to B equal CD pattern that we took a look at, one that you could come up with that generated a bullish piercing can. No, it did not. Sorry about that. So I don't have any kind of a bottom out here with regard to the daily time frame for Nike. Does that mean it hasn't bottomed? No, not necessarily. If I take a look at the weekly time frame chart and we open up this, uh, this has got a gigantic A to B equals CD pattern to the downside out there. Let's just look at the monthly. Do we have that same thing inside the monthly chart? Let me open this up here. Oh, my goodness. We most certainly do. The swing point had volume on a monthly basis. That was 200 million shares taken out with 306 million shares. So believe it or not, it looks like Nike is going to get the you-know-what kicked out of it. As we go into the Olympics, well, you wouldn't think you'd see this, but that's what we're seeing right now. What is everybody wearing those uh, on shoes? Nobody wears Nike anymore? I don't believe that's the case. I don't know why this won't pick up. Um, shoot. Oh, that didn't work. Uh, just at least grab it, Stevie. There we go. Okay. So now we take a look at Nike on a monthly time frame. This tells us that it, wanted to get, it wants to get all the way back. Uh, where's my cursor? Wants to get all the way back towards the 32-ish, uh, every $33 level out there. So we're below all types of support. I don't see any kind of bottom patterns, any kind of bottom signals as we speak right, as we speak right now. So Nike does not look very good, uh, Steve-O. Uh, thanks so much for your request. Joe D. wants to take a look at Mara. M-A-R-A -A is the uh, ticker symbol. We take a look at uh, Mara. Uh, this is running into resistance yesterday and today. And that's the top of its daily profile. 2286. I'm not saying it's a top. I'm saying that's where your resistance is at, and that's where we are. Uh, and so if price can close above 2286, then you're likely off to the races. Where would those races take us to? I would say they would take us to 2465. That would be the center of its uh, weekly profile. And if price can get above 2465, we'd likely head to the 3140 level. Uh, 3140 is the top of its daily, of its monthly profile out there. So that's what I see when I take a look at Mara. I am trying to do these just a little bit quicker than normal, simply because we've got a number of requests, and I'd like to get them all in before the show ends. The next request coming in from, well, actually, the next request coming in from Ronan, who wanted to take a look at gold. So let me get back to Goldilocks out here, see what it's doing. And really what you've got inside of gold out here is nothing more than a good old sideways consolidation. This has been consolidating since the April time frame. You can see that. Um, and uh, right now what price is doing is consolidating with inside the consolidation, and that means it's consolidating with inside its daily profile. So what you've got out here is support at 2320, resists at 2359. If 23, if support fails, we'll get down to the bottom of consolidation. We've already been down there. If resistance fails at 2359, we like to get up to the top of the consolidation. But right now, you got two different types of consolidations out there, and that's going to make gold a little bit boring. By the way, on the weekly time frame chart, prices found support at the bottom of its profile out there. On a monthly time frame, we did complete a TD9 count uh, pattern. Uh, this uh, in uh, we're gonna, well we 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 confirmed it so it's been confirmed out there we complete that pattern this month now let's go take a look at Hecla HL is a ticker symbol which is also what you had requested let's go see what that is doing come on Stevie let's get this in we take a look at Hecla you are in bar number eight today of a TD nine count so Hecla is suggesting to you that if it can close below and this is tomorrow if well actually today it's got to close below. 485. 
We're at 483. If it closes above 485, the TD9 count pattern that we're taking a look at is going to go away. So we really kind of need to take a look at this uh, tomorrow or on Friday uh, to get a feel for what Heckler is communicating to us. We are at support on the weekly time frame. We're sort of at support. We're trading just below it on the monthly time frame, which is that oscillator and change line. So why don't we come back? You'll have to remind me because my mind's not going to remember that. But why don't we come back and take a look at Hecla tomorrow? And tomorrow, what Hecla, or maybe really on Friday, what Hecla needs to do tomorrow, let's assume that it closed below the level we took a look at a few moments ago. Tomorrow, it's got to close below 486. So, Ronan, I hope that helps you out. And we come back from this breakout here. We're going to go take a look at XHB for Joe D. And we'll close out the show with TGB for Dan from New York. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. report as a precious metal gold is still king it continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the london otc market the u.s futures market and the shanghai gold exchange the gold report tom o'brien publishes his weekly gold report every monday morning for subscribers consisting of coverage of the xau hui gdx the dollar bonds the south african rand as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets. With updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers, whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey, because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We'll take a look at XHB. That is the home builders of the S&P 500. This is for Joe D. inside the Tiger's Den. And uh, Joe D., you, this is bottoming today. You've got a bottom today. You had, last time that uh, we had a top out here, that was out at the uh, trading session of uh, May 15th, bar number nine of a TD9 count top. The bottom before that 
bar number nine of a TD nine count bottom. That was on April 19th. Today, we are in the bar following bar number nine. That says that this should bottom today. The reason why I think it's likely a bottom is because the weekly chart, which had a TD nine count top, has pulled back to support, and that's a TD nine count bottom. Folks, you want to learn this pattern. It's the easiest. Just sign up for Mastering Probability. And so we are at support on the weekly time frame with a daily bottom. We should at least rally. We should at least get a move. Maybe it's a counter trend move. That I can't say. But we should move up towards 100.98. The unfortunate thing is I don't have any intraday bottom patterns out here. Normally, when you get a bottom on a daily time frame, you'll see some kind of intraday bottom signals out here. Here's a 65-minute chart. Nothing there. Here's a 30-minute chart. Nothing here. I didn't try the 15-minute. Let's try that. On a 15-minute basis, what do we have? We do have a TD night count on the 15-minute basis. So that says this should rally up towards the 98.39, 98.53 level out there. But it does look to Stevie like you've got a bottom today inside of XHB. The cool thing about this trade is if it closes below today's low, whatever that is, then you know to get out of Dodge because there is no bottom. But you've got all the best signals that you could look for to try to take an entry. Let's take a look at TGB. This is for Dan from New York City. Now, Dan... Price is back inside its daily profile out here. You're in bar number six today. It looks to me like it wants to continue to move lower. Maybe this is going to move lower down towards the 230 to 235 level. That's its buy zone since we're back inside its profile. The weekly time frame of consolidation with inside its profile as well. The monthly looks pretty bullish, although it does have a roads momentum indicator top. So let me take that back. It's got a roads momentum indicator top suggesting a retracement back to 206. So I'm going to go with TGB likely wants to continue continue to move lower and i would say that price target is 230 to 235 thank you for all those request dinners i'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow but if you are off to start your holiday please have a happy one and uh we'll look forward to seeing you again soon take care now